Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about making fancier wood toy cars that look like this. Uh, we made toy cars before, but we just did a simple pine build. What's cool about this style build is that it's about 100% wood. Unless you count wood glue, then it's 99% wood, 1% glue. Uh, but you don't need any metal fittings or anything like that. This is just good old-fashioned wooden car. So stick around and I'll show you exactly what to do to make something like this. So you may remember from part one that we used pine as our starting material for the car body. This time we got some options. We got some solid walnut here. We got some thinner solid walnut here. I got this glue up that I've actually prepared for this build. So this is what we're going to use. Uh, and then just to explain what that is, uh, this is a glue up that I made once upon a time, you know, just milled up pieces glued together like this. I made this for tea light holders. I'll throw a picture of those up. Um, they didn't sell so well, I didn't really care to keep making them, but I had these glue-ups sitting around, so I figured I'd use them on something good like this car. Uh, so you can see I've already drawn a basic car on here. I drew it once, didn't like it, and then I trimmed the nose down like this. So we're going to take this over to the bandsaw and then get started on this project. We're going to use these crokinole pucks for wheels. If you've never heard of crokinole, I really wouldn't be surprised. It's a tabletop dexterity game that we sell. I'll throw some pictures of that on the screen quick to give you an idea. But I'm using those for wheels. I'll show you how to cut your own wheels if you need to. And then we're going to use this craft stick. It's basically a thin dowel. Um, I'll go ahead and attach a link to those as well. I've used mineral oil in the past, and if you're giving this to a small child, maybe that's a better way to go, but this stuff is uh, meant to be very safe, marketed for kids' toys, and it's what we use on a lot of our other products. So I'm going to try this stuff today. It's a beeswax and boiled linseed and polymerized linseed oil. It's a beeswax and polymer... It's a... Oh, wow. And then you can use washers like these in between your wheels and the car body if you really care to protect the car body. I've never found that to be necessary and these crokinole pucks are actually quite smooth. Whatever wheel you choose, just make sure it's nice and smooth where it makes contact with the car body. Over at the bandsaw, we're just going to go ahead and trim this thing up in a really rough kind of way. The final shaping is going to come from the sanding that we do with the oscillating spindle sander. So don't worry about getting too precise here on the bandsaw. Just stay safe and get it trimmed up so that you don't spend forever sand. I had a little bit of trouble with my bandsaw here. I had to stop and re-tension it off camera. No big deal. Uh, got it all fixed up and I'm gonna complete the cut now. This piece of equipment is called an oscillating spindle and edge belt sander. I have the edge belt attachment on there right now, and I really, I, I can't spend enough time telling you how much time this thing saves. If you don't have one, definitely go get one. I leave a 180 grit belt on here because it removes materials so, so well. And the 180 is enough and sets me up for the finish sanding really well. Over at the miter saw, this is a setup that we're going to use in order to cut the wheels. So we have this dowel here. This one's a little narrow in diameter, but it'll still work. We have a stop block here. I'm using the uh, stop mechanism that was included with this saw because it's nice and sturdy. I like this one. So I put a fresh cut on the end of this dowel and I set my distance basically just bringing the blade down and looking at the width that's left here seeing if I like it. So the main thing we want to do for safety when we make these cuts is we want to bring the blade down all the way through and let it come to rest. We don't want to try to pick this blade up out of the slot uh, because what's definitely going to happen is the little bit left here that's caught in between the stop and the blade is going to get ejected and fly away when one of the teeth on the saw grabs it and it's going to ruin the uh, wheel a little bit and it's going to be dangerous. So You'll see me come to a complete stop. I do that anyway, but we definitely want to do that when we're using a stop block like this. 
So I'll cut four wheels for funsies. You know, I was just crawling around the shop looking for where these were landing, and then I thought I should check this one spot. Look at this. A bunch of them stuck in the dust chute. So they may go flying on you in any case. Be ready for that. Wear your safety specs. These actually look pretty decent because we used the stop. Uh, but I'm still going to use these curl canal pucks because I think they're a better diameter for the wheel I'm looking for. And just to show you, here's the car body. So either wheel will work. It's just a matter of how big you want the wheel to be relative to the car. All right, over to the drill press. We've got two sized bits that we're going to need. The first bit is going to match the diameter of that craft stick, that little dowel that's going to be our axle. It's going to match that exactly. And it's going to make this hole here in the wheel. One thing we want to make sure of is that our drill press is set with some kind of stop and that can just be adjusting the table so that it only goes down into the wheel the same amount each time. You just want to control that and make sure that you get that distance, the depth of the hole, the same every time. The second drill bit that we're going to need is going to drill a hole for the axle to go through. So this is going to drill into the body of our car. This first bit to drill the hole in the wheel is a quarter inch bit. And then this guy is a 5 16 inch bit. So I have quarter inch craft sticks. If you're using a different size dowel, just go ahead and match this to that. And then make sure this other drill bit is going to be big enough to leave you clearance for the axle to spin inside the body of the car. So mine are already drilled, but I'm just going to demonstrate a couple ways to drill the hole here. So get your bit in there. <clears throat> Let's pretend, yeah, we got our depth set already. See, we're going to go part way into the piece. So if you've got the strength in your hands, you can just hold it like this. But if you want to be safer about it, you should probably go ahead and use a clamp. So go ahead and use, I like a trigger clamp for this, but any clamp that allows you to uh, do this safely, holds the piece enough for you, you know, whatever's the right shape, go ahead and use it, don't be afraid to. Um, if the drill bit grabs the piece and moves it out of your clamp, no big deal, your hand's nowhere near it, you know, you're not gonna hurt yourself. So it's definitely safer to use a clamp to hold around things like this or make some kind of a jig. So if you guys are wondering how I find the center of these, well, I just eyeball it. Typically, I'll cut some extra pieces. I'll cut maybe six or so of these for a car that needs four, and I'll take the best four. If you want, you can take the time to measure this out, get it dead center, do all that, yada yada. Things might still go wrong, or you might nail it with your meticulous nature. Uh, I'm not really into that because it eats up a lot of time, so I just drill a bunch. Um, Really, if these are anywhere in the ballpark, it'd be in dead center, they're going to work just fine. You'll be amazed how far these cars actually roll compared to a lot of things that you buy off the shelf. Let's drill holes in this thing while we got the drill press all set up.
Cutting the axles is easy as long as you get in the ballpark for their overall length. Uh, they just need to be the same size from there and the car is going to roll just fine. So go ahead and thread your axle through. Whoops. Dry fit that just to get an idea. Okay, so we're going to need a little clearance and a little extra so that we can go into the next wheel with the depth that we need. So let's go ahead and mark this. Right about here, I'll mark it with my thumb by denting, and then I'll go ahead and trace it. Now I'll go ahead and get that wheel off, set this up to cut. So, the way we're going to do that, we're actually going to use a handsaw. You can go ahead and use the miter saw if you want, there's no reason not to really, but it's such a quick cut, I'm going to go ahead and use a handsaw. So just a quick few strokes and we're through. I'm going to go ahead and take that first piece and use it to measure a second cut. And then I'm going to go ahead and make that cut. And our axles are all taken care of. And there you have it. Two axles. Okay, so take a moment to clean the ends up just so that when we go ahead and do our joinery with the wheels, it's not frustrating. All right, this is pretty much our last chance to easily sand the body of the car, so we're going to take a moment to do that. I'm going to work on, I got a little bit of tear out here when I drilled the holes. Not a big deal at all, just making sure it's not sharp. And if you want to avoid that, you can put another uh, piece of wood underneath so that you don't get the tear out as you drill the holes. Uh, my drill press table usually takes care of that, but I drilled into an existing hole instead of fresh drill press table, so... I got fooled there. So if you got any pencil mark on, make sure you go ahead and take that off and then go ahead and break the corner here so that it's nice and soft for your child or the recipient. I've got this car sanded up to 220. If you got any questions about sanding in general or what uh, steps, sandpaper to use and all that, go ahead and let me know in the comments. One thing I'm going to make sure to do since we're using an oil-based finish and we'll be able to feel how soft this wood is, uh, I'm going to use 400 grit. It's going to make it a really, really soft touch. Noticeable. Alright, so here we go. Let's go ahead and take our car. Take one axle, get your wood glue ready. I'm going to go ahead and use Type Bond 3 for this project for no particular reason. Type Bond 2 will work fine. So I'll go ahead and put a tiny little dot of glue, it won't take much, into the hole of a wheel. Yikes. See that? That's probably enough right there. Wipe that extra off. Take your axle. Go ahead and fit that in. A twisting motion works best. And you should feel it butt up against the back side of your hole there. Once it's as far in as it needs to be. It'll look something like that. Now we can go ahead and put this through the car. Let's do this front first. Put that through. Now we got to fit the other wheel. Same deal. One dot of wood glue will be enough. That's more than I need. Way more than I need. I'm going to clean some of that out. If you need to, you can go ahead and use a rubber mallet. I do need to. If you want to go nuts with it, you can drop a square on top of a workbench next to your wheel. Just to know that you're pretty dang close, you know? We'll go ahead and let this guy dry for at least a half hour, hour, maybe even overnight before we start messing with it at all. And then we're going to put some finish on it. 
All right, well our glue up went successfully. The wheels are looking good. They're looking square to the axles and this car is rolling back and forth really nicely with not too much movement in the car body. So next we should finish it. All right, so we're gonna use this stuff here, tried and true original wood finish. It's an oil-based finish that is marketed as safe for toys. Uh, beeswax and polymerized linseed oil based finish so you just put a little bit on a rag here all right we're gonna put a lot of it put a big old glob on a rag there's really not much to it when it comes to applying this stuff like most oil based finishes you really just want to make sure that you get it on there in excess maybe hitting the end grain twice because that tends to really wick in the finish Otherwise, yeah, just get it on there. It's going to look great. I love this stuff. Highly recommend it. The wheels are actually technically finished already, but I mean, I'm going to end up hitting them with a little oil accidentally. Either way, I'll just make sure to wipe that off after. We're just going to go ahead and let that oil penetrate the car for a little bit maybe 15 minutes or so, and then we'll wipe off the excess. Car is looking pretty good. So you might be thinking these axles are a little long, and indeed they are. You could make them shorter, but there is kind of, a, there's a couple advantages to leaving them long. First, you can clean out anything that gets wrapped up in them way more easily if you have the play to push it through side to side and expose different parts of the axle. Also, if you really want to go wild, and I'll probably do this at the end of the video, you can wax the axles to get a little more glide between them and the car body. But this thing's already pretty fast. There's no real need to do that. It's just for fun. Okay, it's been a little while now, so we're just going to go ahead, take a clean cloth, and buff off the excess finish here. You'll know when you're done because there's no obvious wet spots and it's not gloopy feeling. So I'm very pleased with how this looks. thing looks sweet. Cherry and the walnut look fantastic together. I love that it's double wide. The last cars I did in the last video were like about half this thickness. So now there's just more to grab onto and there's more mass behind it too. So once you get it rolling, it just wants to carry on. So now let's test it out. To test this thing out, I've constructed an elaborate raceway from my garage floor and a mahogany board. So this is a pristine African mahogany raceway for the first two and a half feet or so. Should be enough to send our little guy on its way and we'll see uh, how much roly roly we get out of it, you know? Yeah, I'd say that works. Thanks guys for joining me for this one. If you got any questions at all, if I overlooked anything, go ahead and shoot me a question in the comments. Uh, until next time, peace.